Now let's look at quotes relating to the character of Portia. Now bear in mind that Portia is a very wealthy heiress. However, her hands are tied as a result of her father's will. So her father, even after he's died, controls who she is going to marry from beyond his grave. In other words, his will states that she, uh, any person who wishes to marry her must choose correctly from three caskets, one of gold, one of silver, one of lead. Whoever chooses the correct casket basically wins over Portia as his wife. So of course, she's really frustrated because on the one hand, she's maybe not going to marry the man that she wants, but on the other hand, she's also being controlled by her father beyond the grave. Now, Portia as a character is presented as very intelligent, very witty. Also, on the other hand, however, when she does travel to Venice, when she realizes that Bassanio's friend Antonio is in trouble and she disguises a Balthazar, of course, we see that she's very clever because she's able to interpret a contract which all these other men are not able to do. However, However, she's also a little bit ruthless in terms of how she dictates the conditions of Shylock's punishment, okay? So on the one hand, she's very intelligent, very witty. However, on the other hand, she's also somewhat ruthless, okay? However, do bear in mind that Portia goes against the typical Elizabethan woman who is very passive, very quiet, always listening to what men had to say. Actually, she's presented as very fiery. Now, as you can see behind me, I have presented or rather created key quotations, remember, for her character, especially if you're revising her character and considering key quotes for either assessments that you're preparing for or coursework, okay? And so for each quote, essentially, I've highlighted interesting structural techniques and word level analysis you can do. So let's begin with the first quotation when it comes to the character of Portia. So here we can see that she states, my little body is aweary of this great world. Now, this is stated in the opening of the play where we meet her. She's fed up of her father as well she's fed up of having you know this constant group of men different men coming in to try and win her hand in marriage of course bear in mind that she has a massive inheritance and at the time contextually women were counted as the property of their husbands therefore anybody who married her basically inherited everything she owned including her as a person because she was counted as a woman as property now here we can see she's really exasperated okay at this will that her father has left behind she can't marry who she wants she's still waiting for the right person to come along who's going to pick the right casket and she when she states my little body is aweary of this great world hair little and great this is oxymoron this is showing her anger and annoyance at how her father is still controlling her beyond his grave the second quotation to bear in mind for Portia's character is, again, we can see here and we feel sorry for her as a woman. We can see how contextually women were really controlled by the male figures in their lives during this period, during Shakespeare's time, because she states, I may neither choose whom I would nor refuse whom I dislike. Here basically she's saying, my father's will is really irritating because I don't get to choose. It's my father and it's these really bizarre set of circumstances, basically based on chance, that dictate who I am going to marry. So I don't get to choose who I want to marry, okay? But also I don't get to refuse. If I don't want to marry that guy, I don't refuse. If he picks the right casket, I have to marry him, even if I'm not attracted to him. Now, the word level analysis you want to do here is the repetition of the first person pronoun I, okay? It's repeated three times, obviously showing how she's really annoyed. She feels really con uh, constrained by uh, when it comes to her role as an Elizabethan woman, because of course, remember, she lived through Queen Elizabeth's time, or rather Shakespeare wrote this during Queen Elizabeth's time. Also, the other word level analysis you want to consider is the alliteration of W in whom and would, okay? Now, the other quotation to bear in mind for Portia's character is when she's describing her father's really bizarre will and its bizarre conditions. She states that he hath devised in these three chests of gold, silver and lead. So of course here, you've got alliteration of H showing her kind of annoyance, her exasperation, but of course also she uses the rule of three here when she lists gold, silver and lead to tell us what the caskets are that the men have to choose from, the men that want to marry her. The next quotation for Portia's character is when she talks about the different suitors. However, we now also see, so as I mentioned, this play, there's a lot of things uh, that go on in this play that make it a comedy, but also there's a lot of things that show uh, prejudices during the time. On the one hand, you've got Antonio, who's very anti-Semitic, so uh, uh, not liking Jews, but of course also other characters in the play don't like Jew. That's why Shylock, as the main Jew, is portrayed as a villain. However, in this quotation where she's talking about the Prince of Morocco specifically, 
specifically. He comes from Africa. He's maybe not dark-skinned African, but he's definitely very tanned in complexion. She shows that she utterly dislikes him because he is darker skinned, okay? So there's a lot of racism as well in this play. Now she states when she's showing that she really hopes that the Prince of Morocco will pick the wrong casket. She says, he have the condition of a saint and the complexion of a devil. So she's basically saying that even if the Prince of Morocco was like the best of the best person ever, he has the complexion, the skin color of a darker skinned person. And at the time during this period when Shakespeare wrote, darker skinned people were considered to be closer to the devil. They were maybe dark because they were devilish. Of course, that is not true, but that was the idea at the time. And hence why Portia describes the Prince of Morocco as a seeming to be a devil. Now, in terms of word level analysis you wanna do here, this you want to focus on the contrast between the mention of how the Prince of Morocco might be a saint, a holy, a good person. However, he has a skin shade of a devil. This is oxymoron, saint and devil being opposites. The next quotation to bear in mind with Portia's character is when Bassanio picks the correct uh, casket, the lead casket, and she's really happy. And she states, happiest of all, that is her gentle spirit. And of course here, her happiest is a superlative adjective. She's, this is showing her complete and utter joy that she's gonna get to marry the man that she actually wants to marry. The other key quotation to bear in mind is now when she states, myself and what is mine to you and yours. And this is when she's pledging that, you know, everything that's mine is now yours because I'm now marrying you, Bassanio. And of course, what this shows contextually is she has accepted to now be Bassanio's property because of course, bear in mind that when women married men during this time, they were considered to be their property. And this is emphasized in terms of word level analysis in the pronouns, myself and mine. So this is Portia saying me, I will be your property. And she says this and emphasizes by saying you and yours to Bassanio. Now, the next word level analysis to do here is when she then gives Bassanio a ring, okay? And she says, this ring, when you part from, lose or give away, ruin, okay? And there's, uh, I've put hair uh, caesura, so bear in mind that I've skipped a few words, okay? So this ring, uh, ellipsis, apologies. So this ring, ellipsis, when you part from, comma, lose or give away, ellipsis, ruin, dot, dot, dot. So basically here, she's basically saying, look, I'm gonna give you a ring, you can't part from it, okay? This is a token of my love. You have to make sure you look after it. Now here, in terms of word level analysis, what you wanna do is focus on the rule of three. Part, lose, or give away. Now the next quotation to bear in mind with Portia's character is when she disguises herself as Balthazar and she goes to defend uh, Antonio in court against Shylock and of course she's able to cleverly interpret uh, the conditions of the contract and show that Antonio is not at fault and then she says the bond is forfeit. In other words, the bond that uh, Antonio had, the obligation that he had to give a pound of his flesh, it's no longer valid. Uh, Shylock can't take a pound of Antonio's flesh. Now of course here, in terms of sentence analysis here you want to talk about it being a de declarative sentence declarative sentence being a sentence that states a fact feeling or mood the next quotation to bear in mind when it comes to Portia's character is when she then obviously uh, tricks um, both Antonio and Bassanio and she gets Bassanio to give both as a ring, right? So she tricks uh, Bassanio into giving him her, or rather Portia her ring as both as are. Then she goes back with Nerissa. Of course, they're finding it really funny that they've tricked him. And of course, also they've tricked his friend Gratiano to give away their ring. Now she then gives uh, Bassanio a hard time. And then later on, she basically tells him, she says, you need to show me a ring. I will never come into your bed until I see the ring. So of course here, the hyperbole never, and of course there's kind of that sexual connotation. She's never gonna sleep with him until she sees the ring. Here, of course, there's a comedic element with Portia basically threatening uh, Bassanio that if she doesn't see the ring, she's never gonna sleep with him. You know, she's never gonna fulfill her wifely duties for him. And of course, this is uh, adding to the comedic element because obviously we know that she does have the ring. She is Balthazar, so thus she has the ring and of course when she does reveal that this was a trick and this was a joke uh Bassanio is really angry and uh he then you know says are you trying to you know take the take a massive fool out of me and then she says hang on it's okay it's fine it was just a joke speak not so grossly you are all amazed in other words don't speak so badly Bassanio it's okay it was a joke but also aren't you guys really amazed that I was able to not only fool you all 
or as a man as Balthazar, but I was able really cleverly to save Antonio's life by interpreting the contract, okay? And of course, obviously this shows that she's very intelligent and very witty, okay? Now here, we can also see she's very headstrong when she says this. So of course you've got the sibilance of S in speak and so, and you've also got caesura in this quotation, as well as assonance of A in R, or and amazed. So that's it when it comes to key quotations to remember for the character of Portia in The Merchant of Venice.